Good afternoon. Hello, wherever you're at, this is Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm the Dixie Bell content creator. If you love chalk paint, if you love Dixie Bell, if you love being creative, you're in the right place. And we are here tonight. It's good, it's good to uh, be able to share some techniques, some creativity, some products with you. Be sure to let us know you're watching, where you're watching from. Say hi, we always like to see you guys pop in. Let me tell you a little bit about where we're at and uh, we'll, get, we'll get going on this project. So this is an older secretary desk and last night on my Bowtie Treasures page, we worked on the blending and the blending kind of slowly fades out towards the bottom. So we're kind of bringing it in. Three colors that I used. Uh, the overall base color is Sawmill Gravy. Uh, Sawmill Gravy is our base color. Just to let you know, I did paint it with Boss. I cleaned it with White Lightning. I put a coat of Boss on there. I really love the gray Boss. Uh, in between coats, I use the sanding sponge and just give it a light sanding, very light, just to get rid of any uh, uh, little things that might be sticking out, but you're gonna find it smooths out your paint so well. And then inside here, inside the cabinet, it's a work in progress. I put Spanish moss. I don't think I mentioned it, but sawmill gravy is blended to dried sage. That's the two colors that are, that are working here. I will be using uh, a few brushes tonight. Let me just get a few of them out. I don't know which one I'll grab when, but we've got a few going. Uh, some brushes that I like to use, or I know I used last night. Uh, this, beauty right here, the best dang brush. This is what I use for blending. It's not the only way to blend, but it is a great way to blend. And that's what I used on this piece. I'll demonstrate that tonight. I love my mi uh, mini. This is always a great addition, especially when you're painting large surfaces. Uh, I've got a couple brushes that um, you could use. The nice thing about these size brushes is they fit in the smaller eight ounce container. They just, they fit nicely. It's hard to get a mini in here, not that it's impossible, but I don't always recommend it. Uh, but this is the flat medium. And the other one is, and I don't use this as much, but I do like the brush. But I really like the oval small. And we'll see if that catches on. So those are some brushes that I would recommend. You can get, you can uh, get, I would go and sign up to get notified when they're available. I. Um, but if you don't have those brushes, definitely check out and see if you can get a local to a local retailer near you. But those are probably the brushes that I'll be using tonight uh, for our demonstration. The next feature guest of our demonstration is the Magnolia Garden Transfer. This is a, a beauty, and let me show you the back. There's a, kind of a panel here. I'll not be using this panel tonight but I am using all the other three sections as much as I can. This is not like last week. Again, if you missed my live last week, we did a four piece transfer and covered entire cabinet. This one is more meant to be piecemealed or, or a la carte or composed however you want. And that's what we'll be doing tonight too. Um, in fact, you'll see right here, a little harder to see, but this is most of the pieces that come with the transfer. So you're going to get a, a random leaf and a, fla a magnolia flower. If you like being creative and composing your own competition, composition, this is a great way to go because you can put them wherever you want. Uh, I might even recommend you, you can go search. Uh, for example, if you're not following the uh, chalk mineral paint, Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint group, you can search for magnolia and you'll find, you'll see other people who have used this transfer. So I've kind of got a little bit of an idea. I'd like to have my transfer cat kind of growing out from the front and I'd like to overlap the side a little bit. I think that's the direction I'm gonna go and I'm gonna leave the left side kind of empty. So my focal point will be here and we'll see. A couple of tools that I have out, I have scissors, nothing's, well, nothing special, but have some scissors. And then I have a knife in case I need to cut Anything along the drawers, I have that handy, so I'll keep that nearby. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have our sawmill gravy. We'll have that handy. Let me grab the dried sage. 
We're gonna need three brushes. So for now, let's do the uh, flat, medium, and so we'll have these three brushes here. One's gonna be applying the light color, the darker color, and one will do the blending. And so what we wanna do, what I did on the other side is I kind of picked a place that I need to stop and start. So what I did over there is I went from the top shelf to about here and I just curved it and then we went all the way to the front. So we'll do that again tonight. Um, before I get too far into it, let me go ahead and get, this is the second coat of sawmill gravy and I'll go ahead and paint this down to where we're gonna blend just so that I don't have to do this later on. I would not do this um, second coat while you're waiting, you know, right before you blend, only because it'll start drying on, drying on you. You'll see what I mean. I just, again, I don't want to have to do this after I blend it, get that part done. So kind of using my um, markers, so we'll go about right there. I do want to have a, a, a mister bottle for this because you'll find that the way we're going to blend is going to want to kind of dry your, your mix out. And you don't want that, so keep those handy. You could do this part right here ahead of time um, and just wait, but I'm going to move quickly. My camera's not getting all the way down there. Let's do that. Just want to get far enough along that I can get the blending done. I can always paint this feet later, but I just hate to not get this part done while I've got the brush and the paint out. You know what I mean? So just move, get it on there. This is, uh, this is how I would do it if you weren't watching. So you're just sitting in, in the studio hanging out with me, right? I was gonna say tonight we got drama, we got action, we got suspense, so you don't, you don't need any of those other cable providers. You just got uh, Dixie Bell TV tonight. Do you see how I'm painting up to the sawmill gravy, but I don't, um, I don't wanna mix it. That's what I'm gonna use the best thing brush for. So there's a little bit of gap between the two coats. It's not horrible if they touch, but doing it this way, I don't get any of the colors mixing in my brush. So I keep my brush separate. Now here's where you want to mist between. And I'm gonna keep a, a, a wet rag nearby. So now you see where I'm kind of just going over that gap where the two colors were and I'm th this brush is big enough to get into those colors and I'll use the rag to just um, wipe off any excess paint. I'm getting a little bit of um, fragment bristles but that's okay all I need to do is come back with my um, sanding sponge and I can sand some of those out. So look how the camera wants to exaggerate this look a little bit. And, but it looks, it does look, it actually looks better in person. So it's on the, on the camera, it makes it look like the contrast is greater than it really is. But uh, I love that blend, it looks so nice. Now keep in mind, uh, just so you know, I let the colors that I chose be inspired by the transfer. They're not exact matches and they don't need to be. They just need to be complementary. Okay, so here's our reference point. Remember I kind of chose, and now I want to go down to the middle. You would think it's going to be really crazy to go over this, these points, and it is, but we're going to make it work because I already did, right? <laughs> I proved it can be done. How about that? All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I, I only painted to about right here last night, so let me just get a little bit of paint on. And remember, you can just blend and do this later, but I'm gonna go ahead and get my second, get all my paint on while we're here. I 
On my live last night, a lot of people were excited about this color combination. Either they hadn't tried it before or hadn't thought about it before. So maybe that's something that I can bring to your attention is some new combinations too. The transfer is very versatile. You can go on a lot of colors. I wanted to go more neutral with mine and let the transfer kind of shine or pop a little bit more. I need to be careful over here. Yep, sure enough. I just goobered the side. Just a light touch. So this is probably a situation where you just gotta be careful. I'm moving too fast. Okay, just fade that out in the middle because it's already got paint on it. And that's probably good for now. Let me just see here. Let me go a little bit over more. I am not going to be applying a transfer over wet paint. Be very, very sure that your paint has had plenty of time to dry. I actually would recommend overnight, but that's just a recommendation. You don't want the moisture of the paint or the water in the paint getting out into your transfer. So I don't recommend rushing that stage, okay? All right, so here, remember we're going to about right there. stay out of the way. Let's give it a little quick mist. The brush. And I like to swirl them around. I need a little bit more paint. You don't want, to, you can't really mix dry paint. So you see how I just went over the, I don't know what that's called, but the little section here. It'd probably be a good idea for me to go ahead and kind of turn it and see if there's any sections that I need to get. It's being a little bit tricky here in the middle, so I may have to do a little bit of soft, soft work right there. A little misty. If you have to, I wouldn't overwork this. If you have to, I, I think it'd be better to let it dry and just put another coat of blending on it. So you, we got about right over here with the blend and this side seems a little lower. Let me see if I can do a quick, 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 quick raising of this shading. I don't want to get too asymmetrical on this. But keep in mind, if my plan works out, I will be, um, the transfer will go on the right. So, um, it, it's, it's, it's gonna be asymmetrical anyway, but I was just trying to help. And it's getting to the point where now it's starting to get a little sticky. I need to call it quits. So, that's the general idea. A little bit of a not typical blend from the standpoint of I'm not just going across or straight down. Um, I like to challenge myself. I know you probably do too. So it's, it's fun to be able to say, hey, what would happen if we blended around the piece? So that's kind of the fun I did on, on this one. And uh, so far so good, right? It's just working out. Okay. I think that's working out. And I really like how the collard, no, Spanish moss is working up there. I did pull out collard greens. I'm not sure that I'm really gonna make that work, but if I did, I might use collard greens in a stencil just for some contrasting and add some variety. 
Like I said, my, my camera like right here is making this really strong, but in person, it's really a nice soft blend. So you're gonna have to wait for the, uh, the final pictures to come out to see how things work. So that, that's my blending demonstration. Uh, as I said before, that's one way to blend, not the only way. And um, that's a newer brush for Dixie Bell, so I like to showcase that, that technique uh, when I can. All right, so we are going into the transfer mode. Remember, this part had already been dried. So we are going to now work on seeing what it looked like to compose using Dixie Bell's Magnolia Garden Transfer. And that's, that's gonna be our plan right now. Let's see if I can put that right there. As I mentioned before, let me bring in, let's take a quick trip, sorry, hang on. So this is an, an example of what I'm talking about. These are all the different pieces that when you cut up the transfer, you have the option, all these options to compose. So this is a little bit of a clip of kind of what I have in mind where I'm gonna have the, the branches kind of coming out of the bottom and growing into the middle. And then I want this side to kind of happen over on the right. So that, just to give you an idea of what we're getting into, um, you've got, it's a watercolor feel. So it's a nice artistic uh, decorative design. I'm giving you some close up views. You can see here the, the watercolor kind of feel. It's a little gl uh, glary with the gloss, but so that's, that's the plan. Bring it about right there. So this is the biggest stem element in the transfer. So I'm going to let that dictate, but to be honest with you, what I really need to do is I have to account for the hardware and I'm not changing the hardware. I'm keeping the original one on there. I'll polish it up. It'll look nice, but I do need to plan the magnolias around the drawers, meaning I don't want to put a pretty magnolia on this part. So I kind of want that to happen here and I don't want to put the magnolia behind hardware. So you, you're kind of thinking that through a little bit. I don't mind if, if the stem's going through hardware, but I think if I do something like this, then I can kind of avoid the hardware. In fact, I might even come all the way down. And that would, could put a magnolia about right here. I think that'll work. And then the other one, either, see how I have a hardware there, I don't want to do that. I could put on the right, but I think the other one could be here or at, at the top. I think right now it's gonna be something like that, okay? There's only two big magnolias here, but there are some, some buds and blooms that would work really well. As you can see, I'm kind of just experimenting with the, the location for those. You do wanna be a little bit certain here, you know? I mean, once you start sticking these on, it's not like paint. It's not like you can just, oops, let me peel that off and re-stick it. It's not doesn't work too well like that. So I have a good plan. And, uh, but what I would consider, what I'm saying right now is I'm doing a little bit of a fast composing from a standpoint that I'm working quickly. But um, I have faith, have faith, right? Have confidence, you're gonna do a great job and just run with it. Because that's how artists roll. So this is a situation where what I can do so I can start applying it, or I can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm pretty sure this is where I'm gonna go. So I'm just gonna cut this. I have a sharp X-Acto blade. This is gonna make it easier on me. So now I can just set that to the side and work around that, okay? So this is a lot of what we're gonna be doing tonight. And one thing I thought would be nice, uh, let me just grab some painter's tape because not that I'm gonna painter's tape the whole thing, but if I need to grab a tool or I need to let go, I don't wanna to have to lose my spot on it. So just having a little piece of painter's tape. The instructions do recommend that. You have some um, that you tape it down and it's for a reason, for good examples like that there. All right, so easy to take off the back. Set that off to the side and we are in business. Have your scissors handy because you may need to um, 
cut off sections that are just getting in the way. All right, and just go at it. I will say on a scale of one to 10, this one's easier to do because they're little pieces as opposed to the transfer I did last week where it really was, you know, it's a large section. It takes longer. Using my knife so I can get this laid flat, keep my tools handy. I'm just giving it a general rub right now. Okay. And we'll use this part here. Hopefully y'all caught the important reminder to let your paint dry. So what I'll do tonight is I'll put on as many transfers as I can while you're watching because that's why we're here, right? To see this creativity come to life. I don't know if you can see that. I bet you my camera may not be able to handle it where it has started to release. It's kind of foggy, you can't see through it. That means it's releasing. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. Oh, I put that knife down. Just need to get my finger back underneath it. I don't think I cut it all the way across, so give me a second. Because I want to be able to pull this down. There we go. If it works better for you, maybe you could do this with the drawers pulled out, but I wouldn't do it. Oftentimes I would put my my desk on my cart or on my table, but it's a little, a little too tall. Okay, so this actually started to uh, get a little unruly on me here. So I'm gonna use a stick to, I don't know who I was watching the other day, they're like, yeah, this is a great reason to have fingernails. I'm like, well, that rules me out, I guess. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can use the stick and other things to help get this rubbed in and rubbed around. There's all kinds of great ways to do this. It's whatever works for you and your piece, right? And I do get asked or I will just answer your question now if you have thought about it. I will um, top coat, I did not top coat uh, yet. I'll do that later. So here I'm just lining it up and we'll go ahead and make sure that, that we like that. So this is gonna go behind hardware. Those things up in Rhode Island. I need like a, an assistant to get me an assistant. Exacto knife. Next transfer. You know, like I told you, I was like felt like a surgeon at the beginning of the live. But this shouldn't go too too long. We are impromptu. Impromptu. How do you say that? We're doing an impromptu rough live about my transfers maybe Dixie Bell asked y'all that already really you need to get your hands on some give that a try see how it can transfer and form your pieces and I'm you know it doesn't have to be large furniture it can be jewelry boxes chairs all kinds of good stuff I mentioned last week that I encourage you not to, don't sweat too much on, on these, meaning don't, don't feel like you have to get these perfect. This, this transfer, let me bring it down. Transfer is watercolor looking, so technically it's artistic. So your applying of the transfer is part of that artistic addition. Yeah, they definitely free well. Now keep in mind, you see how, I move my camera up, sorry. I'm using the little pedal part. I'm using that angle to go away from the stem. That'll be my reference 
for the next magnolia too that I want that to happen. So now this one I either turn to fit the drawer, but that doesn't feel natural. I want this alignment to like to come from, from the stem. So I'm actually gonna something like that right there. The hardware is gonna be here, so I'm gonna miss it just and this part will I'll see if I can't get it to wrap. And then I love how the pedal down here is ending. Let me bring it back in. Make sure it'll focus on it. It should. All right, so we're going to cut this. Remember, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just so I'm going to set that to the side so I can finish this part up. We'll go right underneath there. So no magic here. This is how this is how we roll. Just you're looking for that release. Rub, rub, rub. Sometimes that might rub too much, but if you lift and the transfer's not staying back, you need to give a little bit more t uh, attention and you should be good. If you put a lot of paint down, you might need to give it more, you know, at least a day, a good 24 hours. Because this, these transfers are sticky and you'll find out pretty quick how good your technique is for applying um, your prep work. So be sure you're doing good prep letting the paint dry and then protect your transfers, okay? All right, see how well that just popped in there. And I just give it a little bit of a courtesy rub just to make sure everything's down. And then step back, slide back, take a look at it, see what it needs next. I think we need to do a leaf. So let's bring a leaf in. And there, there are browner versions. There's greener versions. I think it's good to have a good mix. So let's try this brown one. It's something like that. It doesn't have to attach, you know? It can be kind of random. Maybe let's do one right there, how about that? I'm gonna leave it just like that for now. It needs another stem. And I'm looking through my pile up here. There we go. So you see how we can bring in another stem? Because I'd like to put something here. I've got another flower going here. So we're going to work on that. So let me cut this up. Attach it to the, we're going to overlap the other stem. You can overlap these. You just got to make sure you connect it all.
I'm not going to sweat it right now. So I went at an angle here, so it's a little short. So I'm going to cut me off a little sliver, and I'll use that as my fix here in a minute. After I put this one on, let's take a quick look back to see how it's coming along composition-wise. I'm going to cut through here. Not all furniture is this tricky, but this one's a little trickier, so who doesn't like a good challenge, right? See how it releases good. And just use your finger to rub around the edges or as we talked about your fingernails, if you got them. I don't have fingernails. I mean, I do, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, I've got you've got these little branches, so you can you can connect it if you want. Uh, I don't know that anybody. Well, I guess you did. It's gonna say, hey, wait a minute, it's not connected. But you can put. That's where you get the nice leaves to make that work. I think we need to put something right here. That would be pretty. Let's do that real quick. I think we'll just kind of let this happen right there. It was probably one of the hottest days of the sun, uh, year today. At least it felt like that. But. And easiest part today. But before I put that there, let me just make sure that I've got a plan for how to get us over there. And I've got this piece here and I think that might be enough. I think we'll just do that. Something like that. Now that'll get me away from the hardware, so let's do that. And I'm gonna cut that right on the drawer. I don't know, I think I've used the word before, but the, the word is gestalt, and that is the idea that all this, the parts come together. And this will be one of those things where we're not really judging every stem and flower, but we are judging the whole overall piece, meaning how does it look from a distance? And that's, that's when it's really gonna start coming together and looking fantastic call this one a day so I've got a little bit of work I've got to do right here I need to go ahead and cut this or it's gonna stick where I don't want it to stick I'm not doing any accidents y'all wouldn't do in my position right it's the non-judgment zone we'll just get this on there But I'm excited to see it come together. It's one of my uh, more neutral, interesting pieces I've had. Um, I kind of felt like this year's been a really good creative opportunity. Um, I think part of that has been since I've come on as a content creator, I think that's really been a, a big boost for me. And so reflecting on previous work, it's been fun and it, it's been really cool too because Dixie Bell's coming up with a lot of uh, creative products to, to help that too. So if you're in that boat like I am where you, you need a lot of create, creative options, then I think you're gonna enjoy the uh, pr new products they have, they have out now. And as always, more to come.
This is the part of the video where I'll fast forward, you know, when you get to YouTube. I do have the stems behind the flower, but I think I do appreciate you hanging with me tonight and Dixie Bell for the opportunity to demonstrate with you guys all. All right. So it's a work in progress, right? That's what we want to do. It's coming along. It's, it's been fun to make a mess and be creative with you guys. Thank you for watching. Hope this gives you a little bit of nudge to try some of the new color or uh, the, these colors or uh, the palette, the blending, the transfers. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop those in or message me on uh, Facebook, Bowtie Treasures. I'm always glad to help and looking forward to see what you create if you're in the chalk mineral paint group. So be sure to join over there. Thank you all for watching. Do something creative coming up. And until next time, thank you and have a good night. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.